everybody. Adam Savage at Prop Store in London with Stephen Lane. How are you, sir? Great, thanks, man. Thanks for joining us today. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys have an insane auction this fall with over 1,500 items. Four days of it, yeah. Feels like one of the biggest auctions you've ever put on. It certainly is for the UK, yes. It's slightly smaller than one that we did in LA uh, back in June, but oh, this okay. is the biggest for the UK. So we're really excited about it. And it's the first time we've gone to four days as well. Um, is there so, do more items from this auction come from like the UK and the ones in June came from the US or does that not really split yeah, like that? Yeah, oh, it, no, does. it does. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. I think wherever we're holding the auction, the majority of that content is likely to be sourced from that region. Um, but we definitely have some crossover there. We definitely mix it up a little bit. So we'll see some stuff come over from California. We'll send some stuff over that way for the next LA auction as well. So sometimes it's down to the consigner who's, you know, wants the time or schedules that we got to adhere to. But other than that, yeah, we try and keep it as low class as we can. Well, having followed your work now for the better part of a couple of decades, I see a lot of items show up again and again, pieces that you know, might have a stunt version, a hero version, a rubber version, a, a pyro version. Uh, but these last couple of auctions, you've had some unbelievably spectacular pieces, like real hero, hero pieces. And this, I don't know how old you are, but for me, the early 80s are my sweet spot for the movies that made me. And Krull, which is a completely terrible and also <laughs> amazingly great science fiction film from 1983. I, I didn't realize I was just looking it up on IMDb. Liam Neeson, young Liam Neeson yeah, is in it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. It's definitely one of those films with rose-tinted lenses. You know, you think back about it and go, wow, Krull was so amazing. And in fact, you know, there are, there are some people out there, there's some fans who still, you know, hardcore very, very passionate about it today. It's a lot of fun, but I think at the same time, you have to be a little bit forgiving when you go back and revisit. Oh, you really do. I think they put Vaseline on the lens. Like everything's a little glowy back. But I will tell you that when I worked at Industrial Light and Magic in the early aughts, uh, one of the ways we would make each other laugh, specifically uh, a couple of my colleagues and I, is we would just go, the glaive. <laughs> And it was like the glaze. Yeah, That's this and is it. If you got the joke, you were it, you were it was a good deep cut. So this is actually one of the uh, maybe the hero retracting blade glaze. Yeah, I think I think it's probably one of a couple. I have seen a retract version like this previously, um, but I think that certainly incredibly rare. Amazing to see it turn up. This isn't one that's come to market previously. Oh, it hasn't. So this one has been tucked away for many, many years. Yeah, and I just love the detailing on here. You know, the the, the time and effort that's gone into constructing this for real close up shot work. It's it's truly evident as you look at this. It really is. And there's been a few runs of uh, replicas of the glaive, but one of the things I think is really funny about prop replicas is they often look way too clean yes. compared to the originals. And I mean, you're lucky you live near the, you know, we're here in the same country as the Victoria and Albert Museum, but when you go look at old things, they are way more crunchy up close. The engravings are, you can clearly see it's done by hand and a lot of movie prop work does not reflect that. Like things are a little too crisp, but sure. this one absolutely has all of these beautiful details, this little bit of silvering on this. And the fact actually that I think when, when I lifted it, I realized the body is actually uh, a bronze or brass. Yes, yeah, I think it's possibly brass, I, I would say most likely, but yeah, it could be bronze as well. It's only got a sort of brass finish to it there, but I mean, look at the, look at the work that's gone into that, the craftsmanship that's, uh, and that's often something that's very often forgotten, isn't it? Just how many, weeks, months might have gone into crafting something for one specific shot. Yeah. And well, it's the most important shot of the movie. He it holds is. it up and <laughs> all the all the claws come out. I, I I the thing that impressed me most about that craftsmanship is the fact that whatever this is over 40 years later or just close to 40 years later, that that mechanism still works perfectly on all five of these. It is so smooth, smooth isn't it? as silk. So smooth, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love the, oh, oh, can I, can I? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I never imagined I could do that. All your Christmases come together at one set. It really <laughs> has. Um, so I guess there's a little channel underneath this. This is the plunger. Yeah, that's it. That's just it. Each of these has a screw that sits in the... Right. So is this the trigger mech here? So yeah. that's what the actor would be holding so when you press that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he would just hold this and like hit it with his finger really... And bang. 
how it goes. So simple, but so clever as well at the same time. And interesting where they've they've really considered in the earliest of stages that this is only going to be shot from one side. Yes. It's not a question of how do we make this so it's going to be all encompassing and cover both sides of it. It's like, no, we're only going to put this once in front of camera this way and not the other. And I think that's something that maybe, you know, is less considered today. I think in, in, in a lot of instances, they're trying to cover all the bases all the time for every eventuality, just in case the schedule changes yeah. or the shot changes. Yeah. Whereas I think this was during an era where they were they were much more regimented with hand. Well, and I, frankly, as I look up close at this brass work, it looks like it was almost investment cast. I, do, I can't say for sure, but it, it shows a level of detail and, and craftsmanship that is really uncommon uh, in my experience holding hero props. So what's investment cast? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, that just uh, 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 lost wax uh, right. brass casting in a, in, a, in a plaster investment. And is that something that would normally done, be done within the studio system? Or do you think maybe this has gone outside of the system I then? think you would contract that out. You would take a hero piece and send it out to some small shop where someone would be able to turn you out. Uh, and and uh, in another video, we looked at the uh, the Book of the Living from, from the Mummy. I believe those bronze pieces were made that same way. They went right. to a nearby manufacturer foundry. Foundry or something like that. Yep, willing yep. to do some small run pieces. Yeah. The machinist work in here of each of these radii matching and that these are sitting in inside these channels machined to the correct, like you get one little thing wrong in here and it's just not gonna work. No, it's beautifully engineered, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's, there's time and effort and thought that's gone into every aspect of that. Yeah, there's a there's an old axiom Penn and Teller the magician says the reason they don't show you how tricks are done is because the solution's often really boring. <laughs> uh, and the same thing with hero props. Often you look behind a hero prop and you're like, really, that's how they did it. But this is a rare one where I feel like the reveal of the mechanism makes the thing even cooler. I agree totally. Yeah. Dude, that it, it, it's an amazing and unique piece. I can't believe you haven't seen this one before. It's so exciting. No, it's brilliant to see it come to market. And there, there is a lot of appeal with this film. You know, the jokes we were saying earlier about, you know, how the film has stood the test of time. The collectors still go nuts for this stuff. And especially because, as you say, this is the prop from the film as well. Yeah. So the appeal is there across the board. I, I, I find myself... <laughs> I just, I, I, I like, I imagine whoever buys this is there's going to be this moment where they get it home and they set them all and they go, pink <laughs> in the mirror. I'm yeah. sure. I am so sure that's going to happen. Stephen, thank you so much for letting me see this piece.